Mark Ruffalo has earned a reputation as one of Hollywood's genuine good guys. The Wisconsin native is as humble a movie star as you're likely to meet, but life hasn't always been as kind to him as he is to others. In fact, given everything he's been through, it's a wonder that he isn't a total jerk. Today, the affable Avenger is enjoying the heights of his fruitful career, but before he played the Hulk in Hollywood's biggest franchise, he had to first experience the lowest of lows. From crippling poverty and illness to several brushes with death, this is the tragic, but ultimately triumphant, real-life story of Mark Ruffalo. His family went bankrupt. He might be able to pull off playing a scientific genius in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but Ruffalo didn't exactly shine academically as a child. When he sat down for an interview with Men's Journal, the former C student told them that he believes he suffered from undiagnosed dyslexia for years. But he dug in and finished high school anyway. After graduation, his family uprooted and moved to what the profile described as a seedy beach community in San Diego, and things didn't exactly work out with that move either. He explained, Within six months, we went from normal to bankrupt and eliminated as a family. His dad, Frank, packed his bags and moved back to Wisconsin, leaving his four kids and wife Marie behind. Ruffalo had excelled as a wrestler in school, but despite being told that he had a shot at a scholarship, he decided to pursue a career as an actor instead. He moved into a $600 a month apartment with two friends and his kid brother Scott. Ruffalo recalled of that era, he'd make a f giant bowl of tuna pasta and we'd eat off that all week long. The best of times, the worst of times. He battled real-life anger issues. At first glance, Mark Ruffalo wouldn't appear to be a natural fit for the part of the ever-agitated Hulk. Nick Fury actor Samuel L. Jackson called him a cuddly little bear and revealed that everyone loves hugging on Mark on the set of the Marvel movies. But believe it or not, he used to be a lot more like his big green alter ego. Now might be a really good time for you to get angry. That's my secret, Cap. I'm always angry. Ruffalo told the New York Daily News, You should have seen me in my 20s. Man, I was the poster definition of an angry young man with a persecution complex. I was struggling as a young actor, suffering through imagined or real slights from other people's hands, so it wasn't too hard to revisit those places. Ruffalo spent so long dealing with professional rejection that he started to bring his anger home with him. He remembered, There was a time if you came into my apartment, there were pictures and posters hanging in very odd places where they were covering fist holes through walls, glasses that had been thrown through, coffee mugs, books, whatever I could get a hold of. He suffered from anxiety. The three-time Academy Award nominee told Rolling Stone in 2015 that he eventually reached a point where he was struggling to sleep because his brain wouldn't shut off at night. Luckily, an old friend recommended that he try meditation, and it changed his life. Ruffalo told Rolling Stone, I had a friend who had been a longtime drug addict. He did the meditation program, and we hooked up again after a couple years. He had been the angriest man in the world, and he had such a calm demeanor. I had never seen a human being change that much. The actor sought out his own meditation teacher to see if it would work for him in the same way, and the results were astonishing. It's pretty much a daily practice that quiets your brain and, oddly enough, actually slows down time so you're not so much trapped in your immediate reactions to things. And everything changed. My work started to change, my luck started to change, the way the world looked to me changed. According to the actor, practicing meditation gave him, quote, an enormous amount of hope that everything was going to be okay. He had a brain tumor. Ruffalo's big break came at the turn of the millennium when he was cast in the critically acclaimed drama You Can Count On Me, the success of which led to a role alongside the legendary Robert Redford in 2001's The Last Castle. He told Men's Journal, It was big time. There I was with one of my heroes, Robert Redford, doing this walk and talk. This is my wildest dream come true. And then I found out I had my brain tumor. You have a mass behind your left ear the size of a, of a golf ball. We don't know what it is yet. Ruffalo was informed that he had an acoustic neuroma behind his left ear and would need surgery to have it removed as soon as possible. Surgeons informed him there was an 80% chance he would lose his hearing and a 20% chance his facial nerves would be permanently damaged. I, didn't th I thought, honestly, I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> While the star came out of surgery alive and well, it wasn't without its complications. Ruffalo told the Acoustic Neuroma Association, my father told me that my heart had stopped briefly on the, on the operating table, and so that was scary to me. Thankfully, his heart started beating again, but despite the removal of the benign growth, his battle was just beginning. They told me that the, um, the surgery went well, they got all the tumor, uh, they preserved my nerve, but I just heard a ringing in my left ear. Half of his face was paralyzed. When that ringing faded, Ruffalo recognized that he'd lost all hearing in his left ear. 
We're still. I woke up after that, and I uh, and my face was paralyzed, and I and I couldn't close my eye. He told the Telegraph in 2011, "I was like that for about 10 months, and the likelihood of it ever getting better looked pretty remote. The chances of the nerves coming back diminish each month, and month seven was pretty much the cutoff point. But finally, the paralysis did start to go. In all, I disappeared for a year. In that time, Ruffalo kept quiet about why he dropped off the map, but that didn't stop people from guessing." There were all kinds of rumors about what had happened to me. Drugs, alcoholism, AIDS. Whatever the truth, I was damaged goods. I mean, no one is going to hire an actor with half a paralyzed face. Fortunately, his facial nerves eventually recovered, and he fought his way back into the spotlight. In 2011, he got his first Oscar nod for his performance in The Kids Are All Right. Did somebody take his brother's life? In December 2008, the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office ruled that Ruffalo's younger brother, Scott, was murdered. When paramedics arrived to the 39-year-old hairdresser's Beverly Hills condo, they found him with a gunshot wound to the side of the head. He was rushed to the hospital and managed to hang on to life for a week, but when it became clear that he wasn't going to recover, his life support was switched off, devastating his family. The two other people present at Scott's home that night were arrested, but told authorities that Scott inflicted the wound on himself during a game of Russian roulette. Ruffalo was set to star in Noah Baumbach's Greenberg at the time, but he dropped out of the indie flick to grieve. Not for the first time in his career, losing a role because of a tragedy turned out to be a blessing in disguise, as when Ruffalo returned to the fold, he gained a part in what would become the highest-grossing Hollywood franchise of all time, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He told in New York, My friends have a term, getting ruffaloed. Ruffaloed is, is, is when you have what seems to be bad luck yeah. that actually turns into good luck later. Not that he wouldn't change things if he could. He told Men's Journal, You always wonder, what could I have done differently? But there's also the healthier part that says, you integrate it and you get on. You never get over it. You just get used to it. You get calloused, a little bit harder maybe, so be on guard for that. But take these tragic things and turn them into something meaningful and worthy of the loss. Make it count. From here on out, do the best you can to make it count. He was accused of terrorism, or was he? In 2010, the San Francisco Chronicle reported that Pennsylvania's Office of Homeland Security had placed the Oscar-nominated actor on the terror watch list after he publicly discussed his concerns over natural gas drilling in the United States. They're ready to drill ASAP, and that's the drinking water of 10 million people. Ruffalo was an ardent supporter of Gasland, a Sundance special jury prize-winning fracking documentary. He helped organize screenings of the film in an effort to raise awareness of fracking's potentially disastrous effects on the environment and those living near the drill sites. This apparently made him a threat to security, which he found pretty f***ing funny at first. As the story gained traction, however, he was forced to start taking it seriously. He sat down with The Telegraph to set the record straight, telling them it was all bogus. Somehow this story came out about my being on this terrorist list. Fox News picked it up and bundled it together with my brother's murder to make it sound as ominous as possible. Then every news organization in the country ran it without bothering to check if it was true. It wasn't until The Washington Times finally nailed the story that it went away. As annoying as that must have been, at least it brought a lot more coverage to Gasland, right? Talk about getting ruffaloed. Thanks for watching. Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this other cool stuff we know you'll love too.